Welcome guys, Theymine Gate 4 has two gates. This video will cover the first part of Theymine Gate 4. Gate 4 doesn't have normal mode. If there's a difference between hard and the first mode, I will refer to it before I explain the mech. Eye level requires 1630. For the cars, you run Night Salvation. Gate 4 boss is demon type. Battle items. For the first mode, you take Time Stop, Splendid Sacred Charm, and for the last item, two DPS classes who is going to inner side during the 280 mech take Dark Grenade, which will be covered later, and other 6 people take Whirlwind Grenade. For the hard mode, just change the time stop to Atrial Pin. Later in the second part of Gate 4, you need time stop. In the hard mode, you can swap the battle items after the first part finishes, but in the first mode, you cannot. So you bring time stop from the first part. I will explain when to use each items later. Raid System There is a team meter on left top side. The meter not only gains naturally over the time, it gains more whenever people get hit by patterns. When the meter hits max, Daymine does AoE attack and teleports to the center. All the players get darkness debuff which is not cleansable. The boss will take either two actions. He will either put his hands up or down. At that timing, you have to counter him. The darkness hides the blue flash effect of the counter, so you should counter by seeing his action. Soon, six clones appear from each direction. The clones will also either put their hands up or down. Players on each side have to counter the clone that's doing the same action from the previous Thaymine. If you succeed, then the boss will teleport to the center again and require another counter, so succeed that as well. If you fail to counter the correct one, or if you counter the wrong one, then the clone explodes which most likely kills the team. You can also see a purple meter and time below the gauge. The meter stands for Thaymine's HP which is around 15 HP bars. You have to remove that much HP of the boss before the time runs out. If you fail, it's a raid wipe. Until his HP is removed, the darkness debuff will hide the telegraph of all patterns including the counter effect. If you succeed the previous clone counter mech and also removing his HP, that's the end of the whole meter mech. At the start of the raid, just wait for a Feymite to come at you, and then start the fight since the approaching speed is different among the classes. The boss has 350 HP bars. In the hard mode, this is 150 billion. In the first mode, his HP is 180 billion. Major gimmicks. Around 315 HP. Two people get red marks. They have to stick together. Soon, large red telegraph spreads from that spot. All the players have to evacuate fast since this attack does massive damage and also gives you a permanent debuff that increases the incoming damage by 5%. If you get 3 stacks of it, then you die. Then he will teleport to the center and apply one more mark on a player. You have to dodge this AoE attack as well. Then the boss floats in the air. Go to any direction of times 3 you will see the same AoE attacks. These attacks have interval between the layers, so move in when the first layer explodes. After dodging the attacks, 4 pairs of players have to split to times 3 plus 1 direction to stagger a sword. Normally, party 1 number 1 and 2 goes to 11, 3 and 4 to 7, party 2 1 and 2 to 1, 3 and 4 to 5. The sword on each side has a lot of stagger check, so you can't stagger it in time by only using skills. Random players get a line. After a few seconds, a blade moves to where that player is. If the blade hits the sword, it does massive stagger, so you want to aggro the line to the sword. Each sword requires at least 2 blades plus some skills for stagger. The line applies to random players for 2 times. The thing is, sometimes a pair gets less than 2 blades. Normally, people on bottom side get most of the lines, so the shortage happens on the top side. If the bottom players get more than 2 blades, then they have to move to top side to help the stagger. If even one sword is not staggered in time, then that's a raid wipe. If the stagger is done from all 4 directions, then each party gathers to the bottom side. Hide behind the sword to dodge the red telegraph. Then approach the boss. You can see the boss is trying to raise his hand. When this happens, he fears all the players, so you have to immune it before it happens by using spacebar. Then the boss requires co-op counter which requires 3 people to counter. Succeed the counter and go to his backside to DPS. That's the end of the whole gimmick. If you fail the co-op counter, then it will most likely kill the team. 
The following mech has difference between hard and the first mode. Around 280 HP, the boss teleports to the center and cutscene happens. After the cutscene, the boss charges an attack, DPS him from his back. Soon, he will strike where the players are, move to bottom left to dodge it, and co-op counter the boss. At least 3 people have to succeed the counter. Then stagger the sword in the center. Then you will see 2 orbs. This is where 2 people splits. Remember the 2 DPS should hold the dark grenade? Those 2 have to take the orbs which lead them to the inner side. Let me explain the inner side first. The 2 DPS will face Thaimine's clone which has 2.1 billion HP in the hard mode and 2.5 billion in the first mode. The 2 players have to kill the clone in around 50 seconds. If they fail, the field becomes smaller which pretty much wipes the raid. Before the 2 DPS takes the orbs, the supporter from their party gives them full buff, and the 2 DPS use Dark Grenade and Atropin to kill the clone as fast as possible. After killing the clone, stagger the sword and the 2 DPS can come back to the outer side. There are two counter patterns which is inner side exclusive, so let me explain those patterns. One. The boss disappears and attacks in Hackman range, and reappears by slashing blade. Then he requires counter. If you succeed the counter, then he will only slash few blades in his front. But if you fail the counter, then he will slash the blades everywhere which will most likely kill the players. 2. The boss holds his sword and shows 3 times of red telegraph. On the third telegraph, you have to counter him. If you succeed, he will only attack the front. If you fail, then he will attack the whole field with massive damage. Other patterns are common ones that can be seen throughout the whole raid. You can check the normal pattern timestamp. This time, let me explain the outer side. After staggering the sword, all 6 people have to stick to 11 o'clock side. You can dodge all the cone telegraphs by staying there. 소음, the boss will land in the center. That's when the raid leader uses thy rain to reduce the boss's HP. The boss requires a stagger check. At the same time, you will see blue aura around the boss and twister coming out. After the twister disappears, you have to spacebar through the blue aura and stagger the boss in time. If you don't spacebar through the blue aura, you will float in the air which will pretty much result in stagger fail. If the stagger fails, all the players take massive damage that will most likely kill them. Use Atropin, throw all 6 whirlwind grenades, and succeed the stagger. From this point, you can fall and die from any patterns until his HP reaches 240. That's why you use Thyrain, and everyone uses their first Atropin here to skip this part fast. The inner side players don't fall during the fight with clone. It's important for the inner side to kill the clone fast and gather with others in the outer side to DPS the boss. If it reaches 240, then the blue wall disappears and you will not die by falling from that point. Around 175 HP, the boss jumps to the top side. Each pair of players will be connected and you will see swords on the field. The goal is to put the lines on every sword. You make this shape to hit all of them. For quicker formation, one person stays on top and anyone who is connected to him goes to the bottom. For others, they just improvise. After a few seconds, laser happens where the lines are, so dodge it. This attack will turn the swords into yellow orbs. Each player has to take one orb and evacuate to the bottom side. If you fail landing the line on even one sword, then that sword explodes which does massive damage to all the players that pretty much kills them. If all the players survive on the bottom side, then a cutscene happens. You have to dodge the obstacles and approach Thaimai. If you get hit by them, then you will go all the way back to the start. Below the boss, there's a circle. And when someone reaches it, then he can press G key to do clash. There are two clashes in the first part of Daymine Gate 4, and this is the first clash. If no one takes the clash in time, it's a raid wipe. The clash has two sets of games. First set, one key. Second set, six keys. The six keys come really fast. You just have to know the rhythm. It's like ta, tada, tada da. While the clash is happening, other people should use Dark Grenade and Second Natural Pin to free DPS. By the time the second set happens, Thaimine dashes forward. This is when the leader uses Shandy to reset the cooldown of all skills for big DPS. 
If all the clash hits perfect, then the team will have long time of DPS. If the clash gets some good, then pizza pattern happens on the field, so the team has to dodge it. You can see two orbs. A player who takes the orb will have 40% attack power reduction for several seconds. If no one takes it, then the orb explodes which reduces the attack power of everyone. So normally, supporters take them since attack power reduction doesn't affect the supporters buff. This debuff is not cleansable. If the player gets lot of bad, then the clash immediately ends by giving massive damage to all the players that can kill them. If you DPS him with Xiandi, then the boss disappears and lands in the center which does damage, so stay away from it. After he lands, you will see another circle in front of him. This is the second clash. Normally, the weakest DPS player takes this clash. There's only one set of game which has two keys. Others should free DPS the boss. When the clash ends, the boss tries to jump attack with large red circle telegraph. You can still DPS him, so DPS as much as you can, and use push immunity skill against the attack. From this point, the field will be surrounded by a wall of stones. Whenever you get pushed to the wall, you will be bounced back with a debuff that gives you an incoming damage increase. The following mech has difference between hard and the first mode. Around 87 HP, the boss jumps to the center. All the players should gather to the left or right side. Soon, several players get a debuff. All the players should use spacebar to raise the debuff. You can see that puddles are being made from the players. This puddle does massive damage, so everyone should move together after the initial spacebar. If even one person doesn't use spacebar to remove the debuff, then the puddles will explode in a much wider range which covers the half of the field. You will see the boss requiring stagger check. Stagger the boss. Then, 6 black swords spawn in each direction, and 6 players will be connected with red lines. You can also see 6 blue swords that are connected to Thaimine. Players who have the red line should go to the clockwise direction of where the blue sword is. Soon, the black sword moves to the player. When it reaches the blue line, you have to counter it. Then the black sword gets connected instead. This should happen to all 6 swords. If you fail the counter, then the sword grinds you which is pretty much a kill. If everything succeeds, the leader uses a Xena. Each of the blue swords has HP, and they should be taken down to zero. In the hard mode, a Xena kills all the swords, so you don't have to attack the sword. But in the first mode, the swords still have around 120 million HP left, so all the players should DPS the sword in their direction. If a supporter is in charge, then other DPS should help him out. After using a Xena, everyone free DPS the boss. You use Dark Grenade and the last Atropin here. Soon, the boss airborns all the players. You will see stacks of shield buff. If you succeed a counter of all 6 swords, then everyone will have 6 stacks of this buff. The boss slashes everyone for 6 times, and this shield buff negates the attacks. If his slashes are done, then that's the end of the mech. If one counter fails, then you will only have 5 stacks of shield which means one of the slashes will do direct damage. This slash without the shield one-shots squishy classes. So before the airborne happens, supporters should give shield and everyone should stay at full HP. If more than one counter fails, that's a raid wipe. Around 63 HP, the boss jumps to the center. Party 1 gathers at left and party 2 gathers at right side. Soon, puddles will appear where the players are. All the players have to move to the top side by dodging the attacks. After the blue AoE attack ends, the puddles happen again, so each party have to move back to the bottom side. When moving down, all the players get imprisoned between the third and the fourth puddle. So everyone use Splendid Sacred Charm right after the third puddle. Keep on moving until the puddle ends. From this point, every Thaimine's pattern can critical hit you. This happens frequently. If you don't have shield, then you can get one-shotted even at full HP, so you must know all the patterns in this gate. With that being said, let's check out the normal patterns. In this gate, Thaimine has three kinds of stances. Sword, X, Dual Weapons. Each stances have different patterns. Also, a lot of the patterns require a counter. If you fail the counter, then these patterns do massive damage to all the players. Sword Patterns. Co-op counter. The boss holds his sword in the front and then tries to swing it. This is counterable. 
He can do this up to three times, so several people should stay in front of him and counter his sword one by one. If he finishes all three counters, then he will aggro a player and slam the front. If he finishes in one or two times, then he will charge forward grabbing all the players in the path. It's good for one person to get grabbed, because if no one is grabbed, then he will require another counter after the charge. Wi-Fi The boss points his sword to his backside and the Wi-Fi attacks that direction. The safe zone is his front. If you're already on his back, then use a skill that has paralysis immunity. Shoulder Charge The boss suddenly charges to a player and hits twice. This pattern is hard to react and is one of the worst patterns that people die by falling during 280 mech. You have to dodge it or use push immunity skill as soon as you see him charging. Half Slice The boss slices left, right, and pierces the front which attacks the half of the field. The last attack increases a lot of team meter. After the first slice, sometimes he shows a blue telegraph that earthquakes the players. Use spacebar to immune it. After the 63 HP mech, he may do a medusa pattern after the second slice. If you watch him, then you get imprisoned, so look away. Bad pattern. There are a lot of patterns for this. You have to dodge them by reacting fast. These patterns are one of the worst patterns that people die by falling during 280 mech. 1. The boss AoE attacks the ground and tries to grab a player. 2. The boss AoE attacks the ground and shoulder charges to a player. 3. The boss AoE attacks the ground, then he Wi Fi's the front and does pizza pattern. Sword Rain The boss holds his sword upside down and vanishes by attacking with Sword Rain. Then he appears to a random player and slashes a large blade. He can do this up to 3 times. At the end, he does a finishing blow that may or may not require counter. If he glows dark, then it's a counter. If not, then it's not a counter. The blade is so big that it's hard to dodge if people are spreaded. Gather together as soon as you see his animation. Quick Draw The boss dashes and charges for an attack with blue glow. The safe zone is his narrow backside. Black Puddles The boss generates black puddles and two blue orbs then aggros a player. The black puddles explode after a few seconds, so dodge them. The blue orbs should be taken by players since they also explode which reduces the party's attack power by 40%. If a player takes it, then only that player gets attack power reduction, so supporters should take it. Take the orbs, fix the aggro of his front, and then dodge to his backside where there's no puddles. Back grab The boss shows yellow telegraph on his back and grabs the players. If a player is grabbed, then he tries to grab another player and slash them. This attack is lethal. If someone is grabbed, supporters should take care of them. In or out. The boss summons surrounding swords. If the sword is pointing outside, then inside is safe. If it's pointing inside, then outside is safe. If even one player gets hit, then the boss slashes the players which is lethal. In that case, supporters should take care of them, and others should stay far away. Wind the tunnel. The boss tries to absorb a player. At the same time, two people get connected. These two should put that line on where there's no players since an attack happens on that line. Twin Sword The boss holds swords with both hands and strikes three times. When the sword glows with sound effect, then after the first strike, he strikes the backside two times. When it doesn't glow, then he strikes the front all the way. Back Jump The boss hits the front and then jumps back. Just don't be in his path. Axe Patterns Co-op counter. The axe glows dark and he slams the ground which earthquakes everyone. Then he requires co-op counter that means 3 people. You have to use spacebar to immune the earthquake and co-op counter the boss. After succeeding the counter, he sticks his axe on the ground which makes explosion after few seconds. Stay away when it explodes. Hackman. The boss swings and backsteps then strikes the front in hackman range. Pizza. The boss swings his axe two times and then does pizza pattern. Stuck The boss swings his axe two times and then sticks his axe on the ground. When he pulls his axe out after a few seconds, it does AoE attack around him which gives a lot of team meter, so stay far away when he tries to pull his axe. Counter The boss swings his axe two times and slams the ground, then he requires counter. 
Backstep counter or whirlwind. The boss swings his axe two times and slams the ground, then he backsteps. If his axe doesn't glow, then he requires counter. If his axe glows, then he hits the inner side and then outer side. Backstep and earthquake. The boss steps back and earthquakes the front in a cone shape and strikes up. If someone gets hit by the strike, then he slashes in the air which is lethal. Use the cleanse related skills if someone is earthquaked. Oriana. The boss shows purple circle and pulls all the players in the range, then knocks him out. He can require a counter afterward. This pattern is one of the worst patterns that people die by falling during 280 mech. The second hit doesn't knock you if you're close to the boss, so to ignore the pull, use spacebar to the boss or push immunity skill and then counter. Charm. The boss spins his axe which generates puddles on the ground. Then he blows wind to a random player. These puddles give debuff that stacks up really fast. If it reaches 3, then that player gets charmed. This is a permanent charm, so you can't free him which is pretty much a restart. As soon as he spins the axe, everyone should gather to an edge by dodging the puddles. Counter and Puddles The field becomes dark and the boss requires counter. After succeeding the counter, several players will get a debuff above the mana. Those players should go to the outer side since they generate puddles. These puddles give charm stacks like the previous pattern. The boss will require a stagger check, so succeed the stagger. Cone The boss aggroes a cone to a player. That player should fix the cone direction in the front. Others should DPS from the back while dodging the blue puddles. This cone explodes after a few seconds which gives a charm stack, so the aggro player should dodge it later. Grab The boss shows circles in his front. Any players standing there will be grabbed. If players are grabbed, then they take massive tick damage. Other players can free them by doing stagger. During the 280 mech where people can fall, it's better for one player to get grabbed so that others can free DPS. Dual Patterns Co-op Counter The boss jumps on where a player is with pizza shape. Then he requires co-op counter that needs two people. If you succeed the counter, then he can do two different patterns. 1. He slashes a blade and pierces, then requires another counter. 2. He slashes a blade and earthquakes in a blue range, then slashes again and requires another counter. For all the counters, everyone should gather in one direction since the boss will aggro to a random player. For the earthquake, just use spacebar or cleanse related skills. Left strike. The boss holds both hands high and strikes his left side, then he requires stagger check. Sometimes he strikes two times and requires a counter. Stay on his right side to dodge the first strike and stagger or counter the boss. Multi-strike. The boss aggroes a player and strikes multiple times. That player should fix the direction for others to DPS. At the end, he can either strike in donut shape or Wi-Fi his backside. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and hit the like and sub if you liked it. See you guys on the next video. Stay Giga Shed.